Hi everyone, Rebecca here for Pear Tree Cut Files and today I am showing you this layout using the Overlapping Frames Cut File from the July 21 release. Now I have drawn it and I have cut it. So I've used my cutting machine to draw it there on some foundation paper and then I've used some textured basil cardstock to cut it. Um, now the reason for that, you wouldn't have to do that if you were making this layout yourself but I wanted to keep my colour kind of condensed around the squares of my cut file and um, so I wanted to know where my cut file was going to sit on top of my foundation paper now hopefully that will make sense as uh, as I go through the uh, process um, so you can see there that when it's sat on top you can't actually see the drawn lines um, but I wanted to know where those lines would be when I was doing this part so my idea for this layer was to have dense areas of colour right next to those frames spreading out and sort of dissipating out into uh, lighter shade um, and watercolour um, as it got further away from the frames. And I've used these Ecoline brush pens which are so so good, really vibrant and really soluble on this foundation paper. Um, and I've kind of selected a frame and drawn around that frame using a rainbow uh, sort of a, sl a selection of rainbow colors um, of pen so i've laid down a first layer of color um which i then obviously will use some just some water to soften those edges obviously you can see where i've used the pen it's left quite a harsh line i don't want a harsh line i want it to look really soft and that is what's so amazing about these pens because they really do melt away um just like paint would and it's the first watercolor pens i've had that really do sort of so, like um, dissolve like that and um, so i was really super impressed with them and, and again you know really vibrant color and um, so i go over them shortly um i will sort of add a second layer of color but i'm just going around and getting those lines softened and letting some of the colors merge together so it was actually unintentional for my orange square and my green square to be quite so close together. Um, I really didn't want to mix the orange and the green together. So I'm, I'm really trying to take care not to mix those colours. Um, orange and green together make brown um, because they neutralise each other. Um, and I really didn't want brown on this. Um, so when I've got wet green i keep away from it with the orange paint and vice versa so here i am i'm adding a second uh, layer of that really vibrant uh, ink from those pens and this time i'm trying to keep it really close to where that frame is going to sit on top and hopefully it's making sense as to why I have drawn that cut file onto that uh, foundation paper. I just don't see how I would have been able to know exactly where to put my colour if I hadn't drawn those lines on. Um, and yeah, I just used the draw function on my cutting machine to draw that. So I've hit my foundation paper quite a fair bit with my heat tool to dry my inks um, and it did warp my paper quite, quite considerably really. That doesn't really bother me really in all in all honesty um, but I, I wanted to keep it relatively straight or as straight as I could um, so I have mounted that whole piece of foundation paper onto a piece of uh, pattern paper from the colour study collection and I'm using that red line tape to really adhere it all down um, just to try and minimise some of that warping. And now I'm using those lines that are drawn on my background paper as a guide as to where to put some strips of uh, adhesive foam. Um, normally I stick my adhesive foam onto the actual cut file itself and then mount it, um, but it was quite handy having uh, it there down on the uh, on the background paper. Um, so it was pretty handy to have that guide there. And once that cut file's on top, you can't see um, really the drawn lines underneath. And the ones that I could see, I have just kind of edited them out slightly with a white jelly roll pen. Um, so there's my photographs that I've selected. Um, they are photos of me and my little boy. Well, it's only, it's me taking photos of my little boy, but we were having a Lego building competition and uh, during half term and, you know, dreadful, <laughs> dreadful rainy weather uh so we were having a lego building competition at home and i've got a really good action shot of his tower toppling over and uh, i really was looking forward to uh, to scrapping it um so hence i've used the title stacks of fun that is from the april 2022 release um i think it's actually made for haystacks but uh, it, it really suited these photos because uh, we were having lego tower competition 
And now I am securing my cut file down while I add some Distress Oxide brushing to the word fun. Um, I've used the shades Prize Ribbon and Salvage Patina, um, keeping Prize Ribbon down towards the bottom and uh, you know i've kept the top of that word fun white um just to add to that ombre effect when i downloaded my stacks of fun title i f and formatted it in my cutting machine i also added a small border um which i've cut in black um so i just thought it would help that title to to really show against that really busy and colorful background um so that was added on my machine rather than um, coming in the cut file but it's quite easy to do that on your cutting machine um, I've got a scan and cut machine and that um, to do that little background I've just used the offset line tool so I'm now sticking my photographs down um, I kind of wanted that sort of wobbly line um, sort of reminiscent of those uh, lego tower stacks um so i've kind of stuck them in a line but kind of on the wonk <laughs> um and i've used some 3d foam to uh, just to support those because they're sat on top of the cut file which is also uh, stuck up on uh, 3d foam so yeah just another little bit of foam underneath the photographs to help them to stay nice and solid and stuck to the page and i've added just a little bit of uh, some of the embellishments from the color study collection just to finish my page off i do end up adding some black splatter off screen as well this layout was made as a sample for our April uh, cyber crop in the Pedri group. Um, the theme of that crop is when it rains and my challenge is look for rainbows. So when it rains, look for rainbows. And what you need to do for this challenge is to use a rainbow colour scheme on your page. Now that challenge is still open until 10pm on Saturday the 23rd of April, British summertime. So please do join us uh, in the Facebook group and get some rainbow colours on a page using Pear Tree products um, so that you're in with a chance of winning some prizes, some beautiful Pear Tree prizes. So that is my finished layout. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this process video. Uh, please do give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. This was Rebecca for Pear Tree Cut Files.